Hello everyone, this is Daniel. Welcome to my channel. We are getting ready to celebrate a special holiday in a few days. February 12th will be the Chinese New Year, which is also called the Lunar New Year or Spring Festival to be more culturally inclusive. Chinese New Year is a time for families to gather and eat dumplings, give money to kids in little red envelopes, and my favorite, fireworks. <laughs> this year, 2021's Lunar New Year is on February 12th. If you are unfamiliar with this holiday, you may be asking yourself, is Chinese New Year always on February 12th each and every year? The answer is no. It can be any day between January 21st and February 20th, according to the Chinese lunar calendar. To better understand why there is this much variability, it is important to know how calendars work in different cultures of the world. First, let's consider what the time frame of a year means to us on Earth. One year is the time it takes for the Earth, our planet, to complete one orbit around the Sun. This journey takes 365 days, 5 hours, 48 minutes, and 46 seconds, or roughly 365.24 days. At present, the most popular calendar used in the world is the Gregorian calendar, which is a solar-based calendar. In this calendar, there are 365 days in most years. Now, here's, this is where things get tricky. If you remember earlier, I said that it took 365.24 days for the Earth to complete its orbit around the Sun. So, what happened to the .24 days? Did the plant start sprinting towards the finish line day 360? Uh, no. <laughs> to accommodate the .24 days, an extra day is added to the calendar every four years for a total of 366 days. This year is called a leap year. The month of February, which normally has 28 days, will have 29 days on a leap year. If it wasn't for this extra day, the Earth's orbit around the Sun and our calendar year would slowly become on a sink. And in several hundred years, we Americans would be celebrating the New Year's holiday in the heat of summer, just like the people from down under. I mean those that live in Australia. The second type of calendar is the lunar-based calendar, which is dependent upon the moon phases. In elementary school, we learned that the moon changes from new moon to crescent moon to full moon back to crescent moon and finally returns to the new moon. Each moon cycle takes between 29.27 days and 29.83 days, with the average being 29.53 days. The Islam and ancient Greek calendars are both based on the phases of the moon. In this calendar, the months are divided into long months of 30 days and short months of 29 days, so the average between the short and the long months will be 29.5 days, which is almost identical to the 29.53 days it takes to complete one moon phase. There are also 12 months in this calendar, six short and six long months for a total of 354 days. To accommodate the 0.03 day discrepancy, an extra day is added every 33 years to create a leap year of 355 days. Anywho, as we discussed earlier, it takes 365.24 days for the Earth to complete one orbit around the Sun. So this calendar does not remain in sync with the seasons in the Gregorian calendar. Therefore, the new year will change each year in relationship to the Gregorian calendar and can be during any season of the year. The third type of calendar is a Chinese traditional calendar, which is a combination of the lunar and solar calendars. The months of the Chinese traditional calendar are based on the moon phases. Similar to the second type of calendar, the months are either short months of 29 days or long months of 30 days. But unlike the second type of calendar, which always has 12 months, the Chinese traditional calendar can have either 12 or 13 months total in a year. Normally, the Chinese year has 12 months, but the days in one year can also vary. There can be 353 days when there are 5 long months and 7 short months, 354 days, 6 long months, 6 short months, or 355 days, 7 long months, 6 short months. The ancient Chinese observed that a real year, which is the actual 
Earth orbital period has 365.24 days. So they combine this information and the moon phase system together. Because a lunar phase based calendar year has 10 to 12 days less than the real year, every several years it will add one more month to the year to make up the difference in the two calendars. This leap year will have 13 months and the extra month is called a leap month. A leap month can be either a short month or a long month. In that case, a Chinese leap year can have 383 days when there are six long months and seven short months, 384 days, seven long months, six short months, or 385 days, eight long months, five short months. I know, I know, this is all getting really messy. But this explains why the Chinese New Year can be any day between January 21st and February 20th on the Gregorian calendar. Since the Chinese calendar year's length can be different every, each and every year. Nowadays, the Chinese government's official calendar is the Gregorian calendar, and most of the Chinese people use it in their daily life. But some of the most important national holidays are still based on the traditional lunar calendar, such as Chinese New Year, Dragon Boat Festival, which is the fifth day of the fifth month. Think of it kind of like the Chinese version of Cinco de Mayo and the Mid-Autumn Festival, which is on the 15th day of the 8th month. Yes, all of these above holidays dates will change each year in relation to the Gregorian calendar. Since the dates are constantly changing, how do people remember when to celebrate the holidays? Do they memorize all of these different calendars and how they work together? I uh, know. So if people don't memorize the calendars, how do they know when to celebrate the holiday? Uh, duh, you look it up on your phone, people. It is 2021, after all. But if you prefer to be old school, calendars in China are printed with both the, cal the Gregorian calendar date and the traditional Chinese calendar date on each date to help you keep everything straight. Well, anywho, that's all the time we have for now. I'm Daniel, and I'm here to share stories about culture, history, gardening, and other things that I find fascinating. Please feel free to leave your comments below and subscribe to this channel. Thanks and see you soon.